This is the Jerry Doyle Show. How nice it has it been to not have to watch Dick Morris on Fox News? Is that just a blessing? Watch him sitting there shaking and sweating and selling out to whoever it is that'll buy his wares. And don't forget to go to DickMorris.com and you can get the latest updates. After this old-fashioned political ass-kicking in this last uh, political go-round, a lot of people were told to sit down. Carl Rove was told to sit down on Fox News and wasn't allowed on the network without senior management approval. Dick Morris, he was told to sit down and... Well, he's probably right now sitting in the lobby at MSNBC or CNN talking about how he's always been an Obama supporter. The faces of the party need to change, but apparently that's not the case with the head of the Republican National Committee, the face and the name, Rents Priebus. Now, if you've seen this guy, listened to this guy, followed this guy, he needs to be in the nuthouse with Karl Rove and Dick Morris. But apparently, it's a lock that he's going to be the chair of the RNC come the election later this month. Maybe not, if our guest Mark Willis has anything to say about it. Mark's been endorsed by the Ron Paul for Maine campaign, Republican Party town chair, the Densville school board member, national committeeman elect for the Maine Republican Party, and he is willing to put forward a challenge to one rents Priebus. Mark Willis, welcome back to the show. Hey, Jerry, good to talk to you again. How you doing? I'm doing well, battling whatever it is, crud that's going around the planet at a high rate of speed. But um, <laughs> that that's I'm just one of 1.6 billion, so what makes my illness any more special than anyone else's? <laughs> um, I was reading in the Washington Examiner that Rents Priebus, let's just start with the name right there, um, has already collected 160 out of the 168 votes needed to win, and party insiders say that when it's all said and done, the party vote will be unanimous. Well, if that's true, Jerry, then I guess they don't need to worry about me. (laughs) Because, uh, you know, right now uh, I've seen probably confirmed about 75 to 80 members have actually come out and actually formally endorsed him. So you need 85 votes to actually win the the 168-member body, you need uh, 85 to do it. So far, we're looking at about 75 to 80 that are confirmed. Now, I'm, I'm sure that um, you know, more states will follow, but um, it is not unanimous at this point, nor will it be when I go down to Charlotte in two weeks, because if, if for some reason I don't get the requisite two people from three states, so you need for me to even be nominated, I need to have two people in three states. Right now, we have two states. We have Maine and Nevada. And the grassroots of the party, the, the rank and file, they are out there right now pounding the pavement and talking to people in those states that have not formally committed to Mr. Priebus to get two of the three of those members from one of those states. If they can do that, then that will get me nominated and I will be on the ballot. And at that point, all bets are off and they know that, Jerry. That's what they're so afraid of. And this is part of why they're painting the tape, an old term we use on Wall Street, uh, to get people's attention or to get people like you or others to not even bother getting involved. Because if they put out the narrative that it's a done deal, he's already got 160 out of the 168, only needing 85. Insiders are wink, wink, nod, nod. The vote will be unanimous. And they even offer up that Rents Priebus has some big plans for the revamped GOP going forward. Well, then there's nothing to consider from some challenger like Mark Willis. Well, that's right. I mean, that, that's the mentality that, that, we're, that we're dealing with. with, with not everybody, but, but many people believe that uh, the RNC should be this uh, larger centralized body that pushes ideas down to the states and that really <clears throat> formalize their, their process through the elections and the primaries. And my approach, Jerry, is completely the opposite. In the event I get the three states, and in the event, for some reason, if I were to win, my approach is this, a very decentralized approach from the RNC to the states. Let the states decide how they want to handle their primaries, their uh, caucuses, and their elections in general. The RNC will always be there you know, generating fundraisers and getting money and, and, and putting money out to the states. But those states need to get their, the, the GOP state parties need to get their autonomy back and not have a monolithic approach from the top down. If we believe as a party in decentralized government, a decentralized Congress, a, you know, a, a states' rights type of party, then we need to uh, walk the talk 
and get that out to all the state parties and tell them, you know what, it's okay. You know, we've had a heavy-handed approach up to this point, but, but, the, but there's a new sheriff in town, and this sheriff is going to back off and let you guys take care of your states because you know what's best. And you take a look at what has been working in that decentralized approach that you talk about. You look at 30 Republican governors with 24 Republican legislatures that are actually getting things done. Even a governor like Chris Christie, Republican with a Jersey, uh, with a Democrat New Jersey legislature getting things done. You have the same thing with John Kasich in Ohio, Scott Walker in Wisconsin, uh, Bobby Jindal in Louisiana. The list goes on. These are people that are closest to the people, know most how uh, to respond to the people, what the needs of the people are. But when you look at this giant command and control top-down structure that the GOP has been all about, uh, that certainly didn't seem to serve them well in the last go-around. And I would have to think that there would be some rethinking on their part to take a look at what does work as opposed to what isn't. Well, that, that has yet to be seen. And, and what I, again, Jerry, what I'm saying with the uh, the decentralized approach, that, that's one part of this. And the other part is being inclusive to all the people within the party, all the different, the libertarians, the conservatives, the, the liberty movement, the Tea Party, and, and the other uh, groups within the, within the party. You know, we, we can't ostracize and eliminate and push aside you know, any particular group if we are to be a party that's going to survive and not just survive and win. We need to bring all those people together inclusively, uh, listen to their ideas from the grassroots up and not from the top down. So that's another approach that I'm taking to this to my plan, assuming I will get the third state. I'm going to go in there and say, listen, guys, you know what? A lot of people were pushed out at that uh, convention in Tampa. And had Romney stood up there and said, you know what? We have a difference of opinion. We have different people in this party. You know, let Ron Paul with his five states, get up there and give his speech. Was he going to win? No. But you know what? I'm reaching out to all the people, even the Paul people in this party, everybody. And, and you know, it, that is what you need to bring this party together, to move forward, to, to have victory, and actually separate ourselves from the Democrats and actually look as if we have our own brand, that we have something unique to offer. Because people are leaving the party. They, they don't know what the real difference is between the Republicans and the Democrats when you see things like the fiscal cliff uh, goings on, people start to scratch their heads and say, why am I in this party? We need to give them bold ideas, like Reagan said, give them a reason to come back, that we actually stand for something and not just say it. Right. Well, you when down in Tampa, Florida, I don't know if a lot of people uh, remember or have the inkling to remember, but not just the Republicans, but also the Democrats uh, did a big power grab with uh, Mayor Antonio Villaragosa, uh, changing the party platform. Uh, much to the uh, chagrin of the people who knew that something was being rammed through. The same thing happened with regard to the disenfranchising of the Ron Paul delegates in Tampa, where they decided uh, at the behest of, I guess, or at the gavel of John Boehner, to just uh, do a big old power grab and basically take away any representation or good work or goodwill that a lot of people did to have their voices heard on a, lo on a more local level. That's right. I mean, if you, if you look at the, at the video, it was a teleprompter that was rolling that the eyes had it. Okay, the gavel up, gavel down, which is what I told the delegation. I helped uh, lead the boycott. We walked out, and the rest is history. But what happened out of, out of that, Jerry, was the rules that were changed, rules 12, 16, and 40 in particular. And I am introducing a resolution. I am the, I am the chief sponsor. I'm going to be introducing a resolution at the winter meeting to roll back and repeal these rules and go back to the 2008 rules, because if you watch the video, it's clear that the, vo the voice vote was so close that they needed to take a paper ballot vote or a show of hands or something more than just a voice vote. It was gavel up, gavel down, they rammed it through, and it was, a, it was an atrocity on all the people who went there thinking that there was still some integrity in the process. And that's what I want to do. I want to bring integrity back to the process of the RNC and show that there are some people still who get it. And I know there's other people out there, but they're just, you know, part of this overall machine, Jerry, that, you know, they just don't really want to break out of that because you know what happens to people. When, when, the, when the nail sticks up, you get hammered. Yeah, and, you know, the, I can understand how certain people who have built up their fiefdoms want to preserve their turf. They don't want some new guy like you, Mark Willis, coming along and, 
You know, all right, yeah, he's from Maine. Uh, sure, he served in the United States Army, and yeah, fine, he was a counterintelligence agent in Bosnia and Haiti. But, you know, he's he doesn't understand how things are done. And I think the people who like the way things are done, regardless of what the outcomes might be, are really in it for preserving and protecting what it is that they've built up for themselves. And they don't want any new people or new ideas to stand in the way of what it is that uh, they've manufactured for themselves. And I would say to them, you don't have to be afraid of the new people who have come into the party. We've always been here. We're out there. Come out and, and meet us. We're, we're out there. We just happened to finally get elected to these positions. And I would also say to them, remember when you were younger and you were coming into this and you had these ideas, what happened? What happened along the way to those ideas? What, what happened to you? Uh, do you still have those ideas? And you know what? I think you do. We just got to work together to, to make this party of libertarians, conservatives, and, and, and what we stand for under the platform and what we stand for as a party. We need to get back to those roots again. The fundraising will continue. The donors will come. We're not going to scare them off. We're actually going to increase the numbers of the party by bringing all those disenfranchised Democrats like Reagan did and the independents back in with a smile on our face, with a strong command of the facts and the issues, and not back down to the Democrats when they try to make us play a game of chicken. Now, you've got a Facebook page. Now, understand this. You, you need two people from three separate states, and you've already got two of the three states committed, Maine and Nevada. So you need two people from another state, and one of the ways that you're attempting to get this to happen so that you can go down there and mount this challenge is on a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Mark Willis RNC. Is that correct? Yes, and, and that was actually done by the grassroots. The grassroots organization, different people uh, here in Maine and, and around the country approached me, and they, they put different names out there. Will somebody you know, finally stand up and, and run against the rights previous? No one did. I was approached, so I, I thought about it. I talked to my wife, filed about it. We, we sat down. I said, if nobody will do this, this man cannot run unopposed for everything that's happened, whether it be at the convention or the election. So I told the grassroots points of contact here in Maine, I said, you know what, if you guys can go out and get me the three states, the two people in three states, I'll throw my hat in, and I may not win. Of course, I'm sure he probably has the numbers, but I will do it. I will do it out of the principle and integrity in the process because it is the right thing to do. Yeah, somebody's got to stand up. Um, and I love the fact in, in the Washington Examiner piece about the pros of Rens Priebus. They said that he plans to build national support for cutting spending and debt. Really? When uh, Has that not already been built? Is this a guy that's not investing in pay phones when cell phones are breaking onto the scene? I would have to think that that's something that should have already built support for and been working towards as far as the GOP goes. But watching Rens Priebus throughout this last election cycle, this guy is hes a 200-pound fish you can land on five-pound test. And I don't think that the DNC sees any threat in the GOP going forward or the RNC if Rens Priebus gets another, uh, another turn as the chair. Well, Jerry, you know, that has, you know, we have to wait and see what happens with that, but I think your assessment is correct. Well, we'll see what we can do for you. Facebook.com slash Mark Willis RNC. Mark is running against Rents Priebus as soon as he secures one more state, two more people from one of those three states, Maine and Nevada already in the fold. And he said that he's going to bring a whole new kind of dynamic to the Republican Party with a smile. What a concept. And maybe, just maybe, actually win. Ha! Huh, what a concept. Because you have to take a look at how strong the RNC has been and the GOP has been because the United States of America re-elected a socialist president. Well done, Renz. Well done. Mark Willis, once again, facebook.com slash Mark Willis RNC. Go get him. I appreciate your efforts in that area. 